O'Neill defeats vote of no confidence. Opposition expresses disappointment. Parliament beefs up security. This is NBC Papua New Guinea National News. Good evening, I'm Antonia Singut. Peter O'Neill still reigns as the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. In a vote of no confidence taken today, the government mustered 85 to 21 votes to retain Peter O'Neill. This means the opposition has no other chance left to challenge the Prime Minister until the 2017 national election. Miki Calvera reports. Parliament reconvened at 10 a.m. this morning for the Supreme Court ordered vote of no confidence. For the opposition, this was their last straw to overthrow Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. Bulolo MP Sam Basil outlined why the vote of no confidence was necessary. Mr. Speaker, to conclude, to make the wrong decision today would mean more of the same. Papua New Guineans want a change, and today it is up to us here on the floor to make a change. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Morabi Governor Kelly Naro in debating the vote of no confidence was the first MP to make his intentions known not to support the vote of no confidence. Unlawful means to change government. And the rule of law does not allow a change of government. For the foregoing reasons and considerations, Mr. Speaker, I decline to support the vote of no confidence against the Prime Minister. Finance Minister and Leader Thank of you, Government Speaker. Business James Marape also debated against the vote of no okay, confidence. Mr. Speaker, we have a motion before us that has nothing to do with the advancement of our country, but has everything to do with the ugly side, the lustful side of an attempt to grab power. Period. Nothing else. Tensions flared on the floor of Parliament following the Speaker's decision to cease debate. The question is report those in favor say aye. 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 Those against say no. The ayes have it. Honorable, you repeat in yourselves. What's your point of order? Mr. Speaker, there is a court order and you, you prayed this morning. You made it very clear. <laughs> I have. You, you made it very clear. It's a court order. We got motion? to debate. I, motion. We have to debate. Give me opportunity to debate. I, Mr. Um, I have made a ruling, Honorable Leader, with the greatest respect. No, it's not about the question. You're making a ruling. You see, no, this the, is what we are talking about. I mean, I'm making a ruling to your yeah. point Mr. Speaker, of order. You continue to hijack. No, However, Speaker T. Zireno maintained control to proceed with the vote. The outcome was in favor of the government who mustered 85 votes to opposition 21 to retain Peter O'Neill as the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea. This is the opposition's final attempt as they will not have any more chances to challenge the Prime Minister in a vote of no confidence. Mickey Cavera, NBC National it's News, Tuesday, yeah? Port Moresby. Speaker of Parliament Theo Zirenoa had a difficult time controlling today's session for the vote of no confidence in Prime Minister Pete O'Neill. After allowing for debate among members of the House, the opposition wanted more time to debate, even after the House had agreed through the chair to vote on the motion. The House was finally called to order, with the House voting in favour of Mr O'Neill to remain as Prime Minister. Jehabakia reports. The only order of business in today's session of Parliament, as directed by the Supreme Court, was to debate and vote on the motion for a vote of no confidence in Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. This sitting is a continuation of the Supreme Court ordered sitting of Friday, 15 July 2016. The only item of business for the House in today's sitting will be the debate and vote upon the vote of no confidence moved by Honorable Sam Basil and which was seconded by the Grand Chief Sir Michael Sumare. Mover of the motion, Deputy Opposition Leader Sam Basil was the no first to present the opposition's Prime reasons for wanting to change the Prime Minister. Peter as this Prime was Minister. followed by the government's reasons Speaker, for retaining Mr. Mr. O'Neill as Prime Minister, through Morbe Governor Kelly Naro. Commotion began when the Leader of Government Business, James Marabe, was given the floor to present his views on behalf of the Prime Minister. I mentioned a case in point, the highest cost of PNG electricity around in our region anyway, and he had opportunity. Four years, Mr. Speaker. There is a point of order. The point of order is 
This is not an opportunity to debate about PNG power. Ben Micah. Huh? Ben Micah. This is not an election between PNG power and Ben Micah. After a number of point of orders, mainly from the opposition side, a motion was moved for the vote to be taken by the House. This did not go down well with members of the opposition, who called for more time to further debate the issue before the vote could be taken. Panimo Green MP Belden Lama demanded to be heard before the vote by Parliament. The Speaker tried his best to keep MPs in check and have the floor under control. I have this allowed, is parliamentary. in my opinion, Honourable Leader, there are serious issues confronting this country. There are serious issues confronting this country, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Leader, Come on, Mr. I Speaker. think I have given enough time for debate already. There is not view. enough time. Come on. And I think How many people, uh, How many people debated, Mr. Speaker? You tell me. And I have, me, I have made a role as according to what the parliament has agreed on. Despite complaints from the opposition, the Speaker managed to call the House to order for the vote to take place. The outcome resulted in the House retaining Prime Minister Peter O'Neill as the head of the country until the next general elections in 2017, which is nine months away. Jehab Akir, NBC National News, Port Mosby. Deputy Opposition Leader Sam Basil said Prime Minister Peter O'Neill overrides the Parliament by limiting meetings to entertain key functions and debate on national policies and issues. He gave the vote of no confidence as an example. Bussell said this after moving the motion of vote of no confidence against Prime Minister Pete O'Neill in Parliament today. Sheila Malkin reports. Parliament resumed this morning. This was to debate and vote upon the vote of no confidence in Prime Minister Peter O'Neill. The motion was made by the Deputy Opposition Leader Sam Basil, nominating Candep MP Don Polier as the alternate Prime Minister. Mr. Basil says there are many reasons that members should not have confidence in Peter O'Neill as Prime Minister, starting off with the work of Parliament. The Prime Minister refuses or fears debate on these issues, including the establishment of the ICAC, Office of the ICAC, <coughs> the adoption of the Gun Summit report. Mr. Speaker, our Parliament can have no confidence in O'Neill, who as Prime Minister is destroying our Parliament's rights of debate, rights of decision making, and right to keep the Prime Minister accountable. Straight into accusation, Mr. Basil says the Prime Minister treats citizens as criminals. Prime Minister O'Neill is accused of multiple criminal offences and breach of leadership code. National, national protest continues because Prime Minister O'Neill blocks courts, tribunals and police inquiries into his alleged role in illegal payments to a law firm, his failure to justify his obtaining of Union Bank of Switzerland loan with Parliament's prior approval, is obtaining a loan from Credit Suisse at a high cost, and despite extended evidence of Credit Suisse corrupt dealings, his purchase of defunctional generators from the Israel at high cost, is failing to convene a meeting to appoint the Chief Ombudsman Commissioner. His Commissioner of Police intervening against members of the Police Fraud Squad as they, see, as they seek to interview him. We do not know whether O'Neill is guilty as alleged, but evidence suggests a few questions must be answered in keeping up with the basics of justice. Adding that there are more problems economically and financially. Despite all this and the hype of the past weeks, Prime Minister Peter O'Neill received overwhelming support. Sheila Malkin, NBC National News, Port Moresby. Members of the opposition have expressed disappointment over the manner in which the Speaker ruled for the motion of no confidence against Prime Minister Peter O'Neill in Parliament. About 21 MPs from the opposition voted for the motion to remove Prime Minister O'Neill, however, were unsuccessful. Gabriel Bigel reports. The ruling by Speaker Tio Jureno. And the drama after that. The ruling is, no, the, this is what we are talking about. I mean, I'm the opposition outside the chamber expressed disappointment. 
in the manner in which they described the speaker's ruling as hijacking the process. They challenged the alternate prime minister to give his views on what we will do in the next nine months. Also, I have allegations against the prime minister and I expect the prime minister to also debate and respond to those allegations. True. And also the speaker should have waited until the alternate prime minister and the sitting prime minister will conclude on our debates because the motion was against the other and was for the other. And those two very important subjects of the matter in the, op on the motion were never given the chance to speak. Deputy Opposition Leader Sam Basil was the mover of the motion today. Yes, the numbers obviously showed that we were not going to succeed. However, we had concerns that we wanted to raise. And the court had ordered that this follow through. Uh, the seven-day period that was granted us by the courts laps, will lapse by 2 o'clock this afternoon. So, uh, in all honesty, uh, the Speaker could have allowed us to continue debate until 2 o'clock and then take the vote. So, my disappointment on behalf of the people of Lay District is that. The opposition fell short of mastering 64 MPs. Mr. O'Neill, we continue to maintain that he is not a fit and proper person to manage the country's economy. <coughs> we'll continue to stand on that position. We will provide alternative solutions and policies like we have done into the 2017 elections. We'll con continue to uh, make use of the resources that we have available. There were also concerns raised about no seconder to the motion when moved by Sam Basil. They say the Speaker had ruled knowing that Prime Minister Peter O'Neill had the number to defeat the motion. Gabriel Bego, NBC National News, Port Mosby. Parliament came under heavy security t today when the House resumed for the vote of no confidence. Kelvin Kasper reports. The Prime Minister led his throng of support into the chamber well before the mace was set into position. Members of the government who secured the chamber before the opposition had the extra time to catch up on the news, attend to those last messages and personal gossips. Parliament rose for the prayers to open the session. The sitting is historical and therefore special. But outside Parliament, hundreds of members of the public were denied entry. Police provided Parliament security the extra support to ensure an undisturbed session. Security checks were set up well before the gates where even usual visitors to the house had their names double-checked. Outside the Parliament gates, these lot were lucky to have passes to observe the session. But it's not just a walk right in. Outside the Parliament doors, members of the public joined another queue. Inside the doors, members of the public were subjected to further security verification. And as the historical session drew to an end, the Prime Minister and his deputy sneaked satisfying smiles, having cleared its last and final hurdle to ensure the government successfully completes its five-year term. The Parliament has spoken, you know, it's all about number games and the Parliament has spoken. We want stability, members are given stability. Uh, we have uh, uh, given the government numbers and the government is intact to continue to complete the task that it has set out to do in the Alatau Court. Uh, we are satisfied after and we've put all those things aside and let's now uh, concentrate uh, putting our country forward. This wasn't, uh, it wasn't a surprise, yeah, so uh, we've got work to do. Kelvin Kaspar, NBC National News, Port Mosby. A group of policemen were detained after they forced themselves to enter Parliament this morning. Heavy security manning all entry points at Parliament stopped the policemen and disarmed them. Rose Amos reports. As was instructed by the Iraqi police personnel, was seen out in full force manning the gates. The heavy police presence here has kept off thousands of public seeking entry to attend today's special parliament sitting. 
NBC National News counted only over 100 people of mixed origins who have passes attended the session. Among them were a group of policemen who were not part of the deployment of police operations at the Parliament House forcefully tried to enter Parliament House this morning. Superintendent Brian Combe says those police officers were disarmed and are now detained. Superintendent Brian Combe described the five as rogue police officers. It's understood those police officers will be further investigated. Rosemos, NBC National News, Port Mosby. We now join Douglas with the weather preview. Thank you, Antonia. A quick look at the weather. Fine weather conditions forecasted for Port Mosby and other centers, while most are forecasted to have some shower, at least a shower or two, that is. I've got all the weather details coming up later in the news. Antonia, it's back to you. Thank you, Douglas. Coming up next, coming up after the break, Ben Micah blames government for not telling the truth and South Bougainville MP determined to serve his people. Stay with us on NBC National News.